in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed we pray in one minute before you sit say after me father one more time say father the grace for dominion let it rest upon me go ahead and pray father if someone pray that grace that empowers me to walk in dominion let it rest upon me Someone is praying. In Jesus' name we pray. The Bible says they heard the word just like we did. But the word did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Are you ready to pray another prayer? Father, the grace to obey, I receive. Go ahead and pray. The grace to obey. The grace to obey. Not just to know the grace to obey. The Bible says, now that you know these things, happy are you if you do them. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you because you'll speak to us one more time and change our lives. It is true that the entrance of your word gives light and let it give understanding to the simple. Bless our hearts and be exalted in our midst. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated with a loud hand clap unto Jesus. Amen. Thank you for this honor. We'll go straight to the word. I believe that the Lord wants to speak to us, challenging our hearts tonight along the lines of this theme. It takes knowledge and understanding to walk in dominion. And every time God wants to empower a people, the starting point of that empowerment is his word. The value of the anointing of the Holy Spirit is that it comes upon a life that is full of understanding. In ignorance, you will not be able to reveal the full potential of the power and the grace of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. My goodness. Alisha lakos kebene kosiata. Anisha lutra kose preketiara. More love, more power, more of you in my life. More love, more power, more of you in my life. The Bible says, but you. Are a chosen generation number one then he says you are a royal priesthood he calls us a holy nation then he calls us a peculiar people four profound descriptions number one a chosen generation number two a royal priesthood 
I will dwell there in a bit. Number three is a holy nation. And then number four, a peculiar people. Then immediately it moves to our mandate. He says, on the strength of this description, we have been mandated to show forth the praises of him that had called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 6. Very profound scripture. 5 and verse 6 revelations. The Bible says we have been made unto our God. 5 and verse 10. My apologies. 5, 10. Kings and priests. Other versions will say a kingdom of priests. We have been made unto our God. You will soon understand the implication of this prophetic statement. Kings and priests. Now write the following please. Number one. Believers are called and ordained to be the manifestation of the glory of God upon the earth. Our corporate mandate as believers is that we have been ordained by God to be the manifestation of the glory of God upon the earth. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? That everyone under the sound of my voice and the many who are following by television, by internet, in Christ, your ordination is that you have been called to be a manifestation of the glory of God. The word glory comes from many expressions, but two very important ones. The Hebrew is the word kabod. The Greek is doxa. And both of them is an attempt to describe the worth of a thing. So when you say the glory of a thing, you have to describe all the features that make that thing expensive, special, or worthy of being desired. When the Bible says the believer is supposed to be a manifestation of the glory of God, it means that all that makes God, God, his power, his wisdom, his favor, are we together? Your life should be an unending revelation of all the multifaceted dimensions that are in God. The apostle simply calls it living epistles. That means your life should be a continuation of someone's Bible study. The moment they look at your life, where they stop as they close that Bible, you become the opening of that Bible again. That they read the favor of God through your life. They read restoration through your life. Through your life, they know God can lift. God can bless. God increases men. Are we learning already? So that our ordination in Christ is that every one of us, that eventually we become a manifestation of the glory of God. In Romans chapter 8, Paul is speaking and he says, verse 18, he says, for our light afflictions, our light afflictions, give us Romans 8, 18, which is but for a moment, he says, that it is able, uh, how does he put it now? Did I get that right? I reckon, my apologies, that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory of, there is a glory that should be revealed in the saints. As it is now, your life may not capture it, but don't be discouraged. The Bible says, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear. It doth not yet appear. When you see a mango seed, you really do not know the kind of potential that can come out of that seed. When that seed is subjected to the right environment, and the law of time and process kicks in, eventually that mango seed will become a giant tree that will produce other seeds that produce other trees. So in one seed is a forest. A forest concealed. But that seed can remain a seed forever. It does not become a forest under every condition. There are conditions. Is someone hearing now? Say my life, oh let the devil hear it, say my life must become a manifestation of the glory of God. One more time, say my life, your life includes your job, it includes your health, 
it includes your children it includes everything that makes you you must become a manifestation of the glory of God number two the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 I'm describing for you the ordination of the church based on God's description Ephesians 2 and verse 10 says we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works he says which God had preordained that we should work in them whether you walk in the reality of it or not is something else but that in the mind of God regardless your background regardless your family regardless your history the negative antecedents that has followed your life it does not change God's preordination for you Ephesians 3 and verse 10 Paul is mentoring the church in Ephesus and he says to the intents that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the ecclesia, the church, the manifold, multifaceted wisdom of God. So we have been ordained by God to be a manifestation of his glory. Now, the second thing I want you to learn tonight, and please pay attention, is that the manifestation of God's glory in any life, in any territory, and in any destiny depends not just on the will of God, but your adherence to divine patterns. Patterns forerun the glory of God. Just because it is your preordination to walk in dominion does not mean you will walk in the experience of that prophecy. There are many things God said in the Bible that did not come to pass. Because midwifing prophecy and manifestation is adherence to divine patterns. Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6. Is God helping someone? In this revelation will be the answer as to why you are asking, why is my life like this? In spite of the dreams, in spite of the vision, in spite of this team, kings and priests. Let's read together. Revel Leviticus 9 and verse 6. Are you ready? Read it as loud as you can, if you can see. Ready? One to read. And Moses said, uh-huh, this is the thing which the Lord commanded that ye should do, and the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you. It will not just come because of desire. It will not just come because of prophecy. There is a... If you do not adhere to that pattern, you cannot see the glory of God. Listen, every possibility in the kingdom is connected to a divine pattern for its manifestation. Health, wealth, influence, increase. All of the dimensions of God's glory... They do not just happen because it is the will of God. They happen because the saints have a thorough understanding of his patterns and obtain grace to walk in keeping with his patterns. If you're following, say amen. Exodus chapter 25. We'll look at verse 9 and then we'll go to verse 40. Please, let's hurry up. You won't believe that I've not even started my teaching. I'm just establishing the fact, wherever we stop, we pray. But it's important for us to know this. Moses is building the tabernacle in the wilderness. And here is God, who is a God of patterns. He comes to him in verse 9 and says, According to all that I show thee, after the pattern of the tabernacle, and the pattern of all the things thereof, so shall thou make it. Don't create your formula. If it is my glory you want to see, there is a pattern. Verse 40. And look that thou make them after their pattern, which was shown unto you in the mount. Is someone learning already? Now go to Exodus chapter 40, verse 16. 40 and verse 16. Then we jump to 33. I hope you are not tired of the word. 
the Bible says, Thus did Moses, according to all that the Lord had commanded him, so did he. Now verse 33. He's building according to pattern. Reading to 35. And he read up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar and set up the hanging of the court gate. So Moses finished according to pattern. The result, and a cloud. A cloud covered the tent of the congregation and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. 35. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent. Why? Because the cloud abode thereon and the glory of the Lord filled that tabernacle. Every time you see the manifestation of the glory of God in a life, in a church, in a territory, it is because his patterns have been kept. Are we blessed? Now, I said all that to take you to what I'm about to discuss now. That as far as dominion in the earth is concerned, there is a pattern that controls dominion upon the earth. Are we together now? The pattern for dominion upon the earth is called king, priest, prophet formation. This is the tripartite formation from the entire Old Testament that has controlled the exerting of dominion. Everywhere you see men and you see nations excel in the Bible, it is because they honor this pattern. King, priest, prophet. Are we together? And you see, you were only given the liberty in the Old Testament to be one or two of them. No one was given the liberty to be all three. You will understand Revelations 5 and verse 10 when I'm done showing you the advantage that the saints have today. You did not have the liberty to be both a king, a priest, and a prophet. So if you were a king, you would have to pray and depend on the arrival of a prophet or a priest for that formation to be filled, for victory to be established. Even hedonistic nations like Egypt, they simulated that pattern for their victory. The Bible says, when the Pharaoh had a dream, he called on his wise men and astrologers. You see that now? They were not kings, but they were those who were mediums that accessed the divine. You will never walk in dominion if you do not understand the patterns. There was a man in the Bible, I wish I had time, my God. I think that should be 1 Samuel 13. Please go to verse 8. There was a very noble king in the Bible called Saul. Saul wanted to be both king and priest at the same time and he lost his throne as a consequence. Is that? Okay, yeah. The Bible says, and he tarried seven days. So Samuel had given them a word to wait in Gilgal that he was coming within a week. And the week had passed and he had not arrived. Pressure was mounting upon him. And he took the initiative that I am a king. Perhaps let me also be a priest. Watch what happened. The Bible says, but Samuel came to Gilgal and the people were scattered from him. Next verse, please, very quickly. And Saul said, bring Hitha a burnt offering to me. This is no longer the jurisdiction of kings. He stepped into the priestly ministry, although he was a king, and he offered burnt offering. The offering was accurate, but the person doing it was wrong. Next verse, verse 10. And it came to pass, watch this. That as soon as he had made an end of offering the bond offering, the prophet and the priest now arrived. And he came to meet him and he saluted him. Verse 11. And Samuel said, what is this that you have done? What initiative did you take like this? You have violated a pattern. It is true that the king, priest, prophet formation should be, but you are only a king. It is not given to you to be both a prophet and a priest. And watch this. 
he gave an explanation you would think it would suffice because I saw that the people were scattered and then you had prolonged the days appointed and the Philistines were gathered together in Mishmak. Next verse, reading to 13. Therefore said I, the Philistines will come down upon me and I have not made the sacrifices, the supplications. Therefore I offered. Are you seeing now? He is saying, I know that our victory rests upon this pattern. But I'm waiting for you to complete that equation. And the enemies are mounting. The king is there. But the priest is not yet there. The prophet is not yet there. So dominion cannot happen. So I took initiative, my God. Verse 13. And Samuel said to Saul, you have done foolishly. He says, thou hast not kept. Is that in your Bible? You have not kept the commandment of the Lord, which he commanded. For now, the Lord would have established thy kingdom forever. But because you violated this pattern 14, watch this. Give us 14. Now your kingdom shall not continue. And the Lord had sought him a man after his own heart. And the Lord had commanded him to be captain over his people for the simple reason that thou hast not kept the patterns. Please be seated. That every time you want to see dominion upon the earth, the pattern that has been put in place is the presence of the king, the priest, and the prophet. Usually, in most cases in scripture, the priest is also the prophet. The priests never became kings, but they ordained kings and they removed kings. So, in order of priority, the priesthood was higher than the king. Follow carefully. You will need to understand this. Are we together now? Now, we come to the New Testament. I don't have all the time sadly to begin to give you all the story about priesthood but you see the first mention of priesthood in scripture was Melchizedek the Melchizedek priesthood and there were only two people under that priesthood Melchizedek and Jesus now by covenant the saints are we together the next mention of priesthood is what we call Potiphera the priest of On this was in Egypt and his wife, his daughter, Asenath, who married, who got married to Joseph. They had priesthood. That was why Egypt was a place of power. Hallelujah. And so we see that according to scripture, there is a Levitical priesthood that started with the sons of Levi. That's how Aaron came out of that priesthood. And then the Melchizedek priesthood. Are we together now? There's no point going through the theological details, but it's important for you to know that in priesthood, in the ancient times, the assignment of a priest was, number one, to mediate between men and God. He was the principal revealer of the will and the counsel of God. The prophetic came out of priesthood. Are we together now? So the first assignment in the Old Testament of priesthood to, was to mediate between men. Because until Christ came, there was no possibility of having a personal experience with God. It had to be a corporate experience of God as revealed by a chosen vessel. Are we learning? If you are together, say amen. amen. So Jesus shows up and begins to redefine things. And today... He makes a very profound statement. You are a chosen generation. <laughs> then he uses a term that should not be used together. He says you are a royal priesthood. What changed? A royal priesthood. Mm. Then we get to Revelations and John is given a new order. And he says we have been made unto our God. This dual formation that completes the pattern for dominion. Kings and priests. One person. Now you understand my teaching. We have been made kings. 
that every believer in Christ has the liberty today to operate priesthood and the advantage of dominion by being kings. Please sit down. Let's talk a bit about it. Someone pray in the spirit in one minute. Something is about to change in your life. Something, an orientation by the spirit. You're not an ordinary indigent coming from Wari or Nigeria or Africa. No, there is an ordination upon you to be a manifestation of the glory of God and the possibility for walking in the patterns that make for dominion have been afforded you today in Christ. Hallelujah. Now, let's talk about the priesthood of the believer in one minute. Because you see, in order of priority, it is the priest that births kings. You can have a priest and a prophet without a king, but you cannot have a true king without a priest. Samuel never became a king but he ordained Saul and removed Saul. That means in the order of spiritual priority, the health of your being a king depends on the excellency of your priesthood. Follow carefully. That if there is something wrong with your dominion, the diagnosis is that we have to refer to your priesthood to check what is happening there. That any time situations and circumstances do not obey you, it is not your crown that is the problem. We need to go to your altar. Is someone listening now? So most believers are in shock as to why the elemental forces, why systems and structures do not listen to them. So they say you are a king, but you wore your kingly regalia too early. The first that you were to wear was your priestly regalia. The value of a king is in the health of his priesthood. All kings were as powerful as the altars that backed them. Did you hear what I said? Is the reason why Pharaoh could look at Moses and said, you are joking. You should know better. All you see is not all there is. And Moses came and said, I may not be a king, but I met the Lord. He threw his rod and the king laughed. Janus, Jambers, bring your rod. Let him know that in Egypt... It is not only a pharaoh that sits, but there is an altar that makes Egypt, Egypt. Are we together? Now, today for the believer, please listen, and I want you to write. Today for the believer, your priesthood is a holistic capture of all the spiritual activities that make for your knowing God, your encounter with him, and your transformation. When we say priesthood for the believer, we are describing the entirety of the activities you engage in that culminates to your knowing God and culminate to your transformation. Are we together now? When we say you are a priest, we're not talking of the one who offers bond offerings like it were before. But now we are describing it's a holistic capture of all the spiritual activities that make for your intimacy with God, your conformity to the image and the character of the Christ in experience, and then your transformation. The tools that make you a king are only found when you become a priest. Let me say it again. The tools that make you a king are only found in the place of priesthood. I'll repeat it one last time. The tools that make you a king are only found in the place of priesthood. If you ignore priesthood and you want to be a king, you will be a king without a crown and a scepter. The crown and the scepter is not found in the palace. It's found in the secret place. So when the Bible says, we have been made unto our God, kings and priests it is the pattern for dominion but you need to understand that in order of spiritual priority priesthood is what births kingship the value of being a king is on the strength of your priesthood are we together therefore your priesthood today 
describes the help and the strength of your prayer life, your word study life, your fellowship with the spirit, your sacrifice. These are the spiritual activities. That was the apostolic model of priesthood that was given to us in Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship, in breaking of bread and in prayer. Acts chapter 6 and verse 4. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. You are not a priest until we examine the health of your prayer life, the health of your word study life, the health of your participation in the house of God because there is a blessing that is only found when believers are gathered. Psalm 133, for there the Lord had commanded the blessing, even life forever. No matter how you know God, there is a dimension of him you will never know until you are in the corporate gathering of the saints. Are we together? So when you say you are a priest, it is a title that does not earn any respect in the spirit until it is powered by your prayer life, powered by your word study life. There are many people who claim I am a priest, but it is clear that life has refused to respect that honor and that title because it is not a blind title. It is a call to responsibility. If you say you are a priest, whether serving the devil or serving God, one thing is common between them. There is no laziness. Both are a call for responsibility. Am I right on that? Whether it is a, an evil priest in the village, they are not lazy people. There are things common between all priesthoods, regardless who you serve. Prayer. But we will give ourselves continually. Ladies and gentlemen, you want to stir up and stand in the position of priesthood. You have to master the mysteries of the altar. Situations and circumstances will not bow to you because of your name. They have no regard for your face. They respect the fire that burns upon your altar. Is God speaking to someone? So do not say you are a priest until you have invested time building in prayer. And I wish I had time I would have taught you According to scripture, there are four assignments of prayer. Number one, and the major assignment of prayer is for your growth and transformation. Luke 9, 29. And as he prayed, the Bible says, the fashion of his countenance were altered and his raiment became white and glistering. Assignment number two of prayer is a platform for making requests and obtaining promises. The Bible says, and what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, not when ye wish, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest them and thou shalt have them. Assignment number three for prayer is as a tool for spiritual legislation. Hmm. Are we together? The Bible says, declare thou that ye mightest be justified. Number four, the fourth assignment of prayer is as a prophetic tool for warfare and intercession. And I sought for a man to stand in the gap. And there was none. That should be Ezekiel 22 and verse 30, 31. Hallelujah. Satan, I desire to save you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you are converted, use that same formula to strengthen your brethren. That every time you see an attack, According to James 5.13, is any man afflicted? Let him pray. You are not a priest if you do not build the altar of prayer. Number two, your soundness in scripture is what gives you authority in life. The word authority comes from the Greek word exousia. And that word is a summation of your understanding. Authority, exousia, means the capacity to stand in the stead of another. And that happens upon the strength of light. Isaiah 60 and verse 1 says, arise, shine. Not because you are tired of sitting there, 
it says, for thy light has come. Amplified says, arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new light. Hallelujah. We rise in this kingdom upon the strength of the mysteries that we have. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 10, 11. It says, it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 2. The apostle said, I went up by revelation. Is God speaking to someone? And so, number one, your prayer life. You want to be a priest indeed. You must have high level spiritual illumination. John 1, 5. That is that. The Bible says, in, when you read Genesis chapter 1 and verse 5, the Bible says, God called the light day. And he called the darkness night. Watch this. He never called evening darkness. He called the absence of light darkness. That means even if it is 12 midnight in your life and you have light in the spirit, you are in the day. Are we together now? So that the realm of the spirit does not work with chronological time. No. If it is 6 p.m. in my life, I am still a custodian of light. It is day. And the Bible says there is a relationship between darkness and weeping. That weeping endures for as long as there is night. The absence of light. He called the light day. So if you catch a revelation by 10 p.m., your night has become day. It can be 12 noon and in the spirit you are in darkness. Hallelujah. Are we together? Priesthood now. So here we have a robust prayer life. We have access to light. And how many of you know that light is in degrees? Am I right on that? Paul was mentoring the church in Corinth and he said there are all kinds of bodies. There are bodies terrestrial and there are bodies celestial. He says even among the stars, one differed from another in glory. Not in size, in glory. Have you gone to an expensive store and you see something so small, annoyingly small, and you make a mistake of touching it and they tell you a price that you almost want to rebuke the person speaking? Am I right on that? Then you'll see another looking like a statue taller than you and is almost next to nothing. The difference is not the size, it's the glory that is hidden in them. Women know this, I hope men understand. Women can carry jewelries so small, so tiny, and they tell you this is pure gold, 24 carat, and they call a name that you almost want to block your ears. One different from another in glory. Watch this. The moment light goes off in your house, notice how you begin to switch different lights until you finally own the light you desire. You start with maybe your phone light. It used to be candle, but now we've gone past candle. So phone light is not enough to turn the room into night, but it's enough for you to take the first step. The phone light leads you to the generator room. Am I right on that? The moment you get to the generator room, you have to use the phone light as small as it is to maybe put your diesel. And then when you switch it on, you off the phone. Am I right on that? And then the generator is there. And sometimes the generator can run until 6 or 7. The moment sunlight comes, you off the generator in most cases. Because a higher dimension of light has come. Now, I said that to tell you this. The Bible says, he made two great lights. There were many lights he made, but he made two great lights. One to rule the day and the other to rule the night. There are lights that help you rule in the day. And there are lights that help you rule in the night. I'm praying for someone here. Your appetite for the word that puts you in a place of understanding. May that grace rest upon you. I stand upon the grace on this altar and I prophesy to someone your days of ignorance that has punished you recycling seasons of pain may it come to an end now say I am a priest let the devil hear you say I am a priest 
I am a priest means I make up my mind to be committed to prayer. I am a priest means I make up my mind to be committed to an understanding of scripture. I am a priest means I make up my mind to give myself to fellowship with the spirit and the saints. I am a priest means all the sacrifices that priesthood demands, I am willing to make for it. This is priesthood for you. Let me show you five rewards of priesthood and they all happen to be the tools you need to be a king. One, is God helping us? If you're a man of God here, with all due respect, please listen to me. If you do not understand these elements of priesthood, you may not find yourself walking in dominion. It says, they know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Psalm 85 and verse 6 says, I have said, in spite of your experience, I have said, ye are gods and all of you are children of the Most High. Verse 7 says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes. What do you get when you are a faithful priest? You will get the tools that now qualify you to be a king. Are you ready? There are five of them. Number one, the first token you get from effective priesthood is wisdom. Let me give it to you. Wisdom is not found in the palace. If it were found in the palace, Pharaoh will not call Joseph. Wisdom is not found in the palace. It is used in the palace. But it is not found in the palace. Ah. As I just turned, I just saw light. And I'm, I'm seeing, I'm seeing the number five. And the Lord is telling me that there are five people here by the Spirit of God. You have prayed and you have fasted. Watch this. There is the spirit of prophecy on five people. Please, I want you to pick those five people now and bring out for me. I want to stretch my hand. I just saw that light. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where they are. But wherever you are, you have been walking with God in the secret place. And the Lord is saying, you're seizing the apparatus care. Please bring them out. I stretch my hands. Let that fire, let that light, wherever you are, by the spirit of the living God. Please let me have them here. In the name of Jesus, I'm praying for you of these five people. Let that grace from heaven rest upon you and turn you to another man like Saul was turned to another man. Bring them out and turn you to another man like Saul. Please help that lady. Can I teach you a little song in this church? I, 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 glory be to God. I, 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 glory be to God. I, 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 glory be to God. Bring them out. I, 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 glory be to God. I, 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 glory be to God. I, 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 glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory be to God. Ay, 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 glory be to God. Is someone learning? Please bring for me three people who will start running. Whether you are an usher or not, just hold them. It's the grace for speed that is coming on someone. Hold them and bring them to the front now. This is happening by the... Help them, please. No, 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 gentlemen. This is not in the flesh. The hand of God is coming upon them. Please guide them, ushers. Shabaka tabaka. Embreketa skotepa shiata. 
Are you still watching me or you are praying in the spirit that as this is resting upon people, we are standing upon the grace upon this altar. Ah, you must be a beneficiary of this grace. Help them please. Anyone under the anointing as such, hold them so they don't injure themselves. Please, whether you are an usher or not, He has made us unto our God kings and priests. Please sit down if you can. I need to give you this so that we wrap up. The first token you receive as a result of the strength of your priesthood is wisdom. And the Bible speaking now of wisdom is said by me kings reign and princes decree justice. Me princes rule. With me are riches, wealth, and honor. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. Doth not wisdom cry? Show me a man that has invested in his priesthood. I show you a man who will have wisdom like that of the gods. Daniel the priest became Daniel the king. And the secret was revealed unto Daniel. Is someone learning now that when we invest in priesthood meaning our prayer meaning the study of the word who is Gloria Gloria I'm hearing a name Gloria can I speak to Gloria Gloria what do you do madam Ay, 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 glory be to God. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a woman, one, two, three, four, five, six years. You've been trusting God for the fruit of the womb. This is what I'm seeing. Six years. Please don't just come out at random. Let's be organized. We are working with time. I don't know who that person is, but I'm seeing you are wearing like red. Is it a red cloth or something? Please, ushers or whoever, officials, just confirm so we don't have people making this place rowdy. I want to pray for you. Gloria, I presume there are so many people I want to pray for you. That the plague of death, the plague of death, the plague of death will come to an end. The plague of death, death over your family will come to an end by the spirit of the living God. Who is she? No, no, there are many glorious here. It's not just one person. In the name of Jesus Christ, there's someone who has been trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Six years. What is your name? Huh? I want to pray for you. I'm not hearing her, but I'm hearing, is this mic working? Who is Gift? Gift. What is your name? What's your name? Gift. Gift. I want to pray for you. You are married? How many years? You've been trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Do you believe in miracles? I'm seeing something inside your stomach. Have you gone to the hospital? Yes. Don't be embarrassed, huh? Yes, you will not forget this conference in a hurry. <laughs> in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands and I curse that devil. Let her go now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, let that anointing rest upon you and according to the time of life, like Elisha prophesied to the woman in Shunem, in the name of Jesus, may God give you the miracle of fruitfulness. I use as a point of contact to pray for everyone here, trusting God for the fruit of the womb, for yourself or for your loved ones. In the name of Jesus, may my God, who is also your God, may he visit you. May he visit you. May he visit you. According to Genesis 21 verse 1, and the Lord visited Sarah as he has said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. May my God visit you. For sake of time, let me speak over Gloria. We have to work with time. In the name of Jesus, everyone who has come here in honor to this prophetic call, I place a grace on you that the plague of death comes to an end. 
I hope you know that death is beyond the phenomenon. Death is a spirit. The rider upon the pale horse, according to Revelation, holding a pair of balances, he said, and his name is death. Oh, death, where is your sting? And oh, grave, where is your victory? In the name of Jesus, I'm praying again for them and for everyone here. Any family that has kept mourning, circles of death, patterns of death, we cause the altar that sponsors that evil. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, when I say an altar, I don't just mean a physical monument. An altar is a strategy. It's a system of authorization. It can be physically adumbrated, but whether the physical expression is there or not, the very throne that God sits on is an altar. Are we together now? So when we talk of an altar, we mean a system of authorization. You know the presence of an altar in a life by the continuity of events, good or bad. The moment events happen unrestrained, there is an altar powering them. In the name of Jesus Christ, please return to your seat. Let's finish this. The first token that you get in the place of priesthood is what? Shout it one more time, please. Number two. Any man who takes the time to be a priest before God must become an example, a personification of wisdom. Are you ready for number two? The second token that we get as a result of effective priesthood is power. Tarry ye in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power. What is power? The ability to manipulate things to make them consistent with the will of God is called power. The ability to manipulate all things, whatsoever they are, and compel them to be consistent. You cannot talk about power in isolation with the will of God. Because the assignment of power is to bring all things to the will of God. Power does not stop its assignment until the will of God is made manifest. That means the will of God is the trigger for the manifestation of power. If you are not walking in the will of God, the power of God has no assignment in your life. Are we together now? Somebody say power. Power is very important because it takes the power of God to subdue the forces of darkness that attempt to fight the purposes of God in the lives of believers. Psalm 66 verse 3. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy ways. It is through the greatness of thy power that thy enemies submit themselves to you. Enemies do not listen to discussions. It takes power. An altar that predated your birth, it will not respect English. I respect your education, but the realm of the spirit only answers to power. Ask Pharaoh. Pharaoh said, Moses, you came to me speaking and asking me to bring people who had been in captivity before you were born. You are joking. And Moses said, end of discussion. I'm not here to waste my words. Power will do the speaking. Power is an evangelist. There is a sermon only power can preach. And there is an audience that has been designed to listen to the sermon that power brings. Can I tell you, by the time you are empowered of the spirit... And God uses you to rewrite the narratives of your family members. Even those who are not saved, they will run to Jesus. It takes power. The Bible says in Acts chapter 4 and verse 33, with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. It takes power. Number one, wisdom. Number two, power. Are you ready for number three? Hmm. The third key or the third token that you get in the secret place is favor. Favor is the number one reason people succeed as kings. 
Wealth is an expression of favor. When favor and wisdom work together, they equal influence, they equal wealth. The proof of favor is not money. The proof of favor is loyalty of the heart of men. You can have money through productivity. It does not translate to favor. If God does not favor you, many things will not happen to you. Even speed is a function of favor. My goodness, I wish I had time. Let me show you something. Esther chapter 2 and verse 9. Esther 2 and verse 9. Hmm. Please read with me. I will ask you to stop somewhere. Let me show you what favor can do. Are you ready? And the maiden pleased him. The maiden being Esther. And she obtained what? Favor of him. What was the result? And he speedily gave her. Stop there. He did what? He speedily gave her. There are some of you people who want to give but they are too slow. Relative to your destiny. Favor becomes your accelerator factor. He speedily gave her. L listen. Destiny is a function of time. You don't have all the time for everything. There are things that must arrive early. It says satisfy me early. He speedily gave her. He speedily gave her. Does that look like someone's prophecy tonight? In the name of Jesus. I don't know what has delayed the manifestation of prophecy. But we stand tonight as prophetic midwives. And we declare, may you be speedily given. Speedily given. Speedily given. She obtained. And he speedily gave her. Number two, same as that chapter two and verse 15. When you read the B part, ladies and gentlemen, there were many young ladies that were there being prepared to meet Ahasuerus. But when favor is upon you, the last sentence, read with me as loud as you can. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of how many? Not all them that wanted to bless her. All them that looked upon her. That when favor is on you, it's almost like a charm. Provided a man looks at you, they are compelled to reach out to you. The Bible never said that they wanted to give her. But because there was that mantle. There was a cup bearer in the Bible called Nehemiah. He was the cup bearer of a king. When favor came upon him, the king observed his countenance and said, what is wrong? And he said, I am here and the walls of Jerusalem have not been built. He gave him materials, wrote letter that no one would harass him until the walls were built. Say favor. The last verse, 2 and verse 17, same Esther. And the king loved Esther. That's not the statement. The most fearful statement in this scripture is the word above all. Above all. Before she arrived, there were other people. Before your proposal arrived, there were others. But as soon as it arrived, the Bible says the king loved Joshua Selman. I won't put your name there. Above all, above all, above all, the character of favor preferred above all. Can I show you the last character of favor? I hope I'm not wasting your time. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. Please shout it as loud as you can when you see it projected. Ready? One to read. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. In fact, I feel like giving business people one more scripture. Can I give you one more scripture? Psalm 44 and verse 3. You're a businessman here, please listen. I want you to read this scripture with me. Ready? One to read. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them, but thy right hand and thine arm and the light of thy countenance, because thou hadst a favor.
I will give one more and then I'll have to stop here. So number one, are you seeing now that what you need to be a king is only gotten in the place of priesthood? Whatever makes you a king is not gotten in the palace. It is only used in the palace. So if you go and sit down there as an empty king who is not a priest, soon you will be dethroned. It is priests that dethrone kings. When David stood before Goliath, he said, I know I don't have a crown on my head, but make no mistake, you are looking at a priest here. Goliath said, am I a dog? He said, you come against me with your spears and your bows, but I come against you in a name. There is a covenant. There is priesthood that sponsors my audacity. When David became a priest, he certainly became a king. They were kings who did not respect priesthood and they fell for it. An example was Herod in the book of Acts. He did not know the power of priesthood. And when they caught James and beheaded him, they, he saw that it pleased the Jews. The Bible said he made up his mind to vex certain Jews. And the church where they neglected their priesthood and oh dear, every time the church neglects priesthood, something will happen within the cosmos. But if the church does not understand the value of priesthood, they will stop as priests and not become kings. The journey is not supposed to end with the altar. It starts with the altar, but it ends in the place of dominion. When Jesus was exalted, he did not remain savior forever. He sat at the right hand. That was the final destination. Albeit, he's still making intercession. Priesthood is still there. He sat at that seat as both king and priest. Yeah. Hallelujah. Number one, wisdom. Number two, power. Number three, favor. It is favor that makes men to come to you. Let me give you the last, honor. There are many, I will stop here, honor. Do you know the assignment of honor? Honor is the principal requirement for commanding influence. You cannot have influence if you don't have honor. You know what influence is? The ability to make men buy into your ideologies without using force or cruelty is called influence. And you cannot become a leader if you lack honor. Do you know what it means to be honored? I know we use it for politicians, honorable, just for the fun of it. And with all due respect, you're a politician, you are still honorable. I'm talking about the one that comes from the secret place. You can respect yourself, but you cannot honor yourself. Honor is conferred. <laughs> Hallelujah. Honor is conferred. The Lord said, take thee Joshua, the son of Nun. That should be Numbers 27, I think, maybe verse 17 or so. Take thee Joshua, the son of Nun. Maybe 18. Let's, let's search for it. If we don't find it, then. Okay, beautiful. It says, and the Lord said unto Moses. This will be my final scripture, I hope. Take thee Joshua, the son of Nun. A man in whom already is the spirit. He says, and lay your hands upon him. Watch this now. It says 19. We're reading to 20. And set him before Eliaza the priest, and before all the congregation, and give him charge in their sight. But they will not listen to Joshua. He's a young man. Here is the secret to the dominion. Thou shalt put some of thy honor upon him. Why? That the congregation of Israel may be obedient. Pastor, your members will not listen to you because you have zeal, but you do not have honor. A generation will never hear you just because you have revelation. It's a grace for honor that compels loyalty. If you're a Christian politician here, please listen. Let me show you a big secret. You need more than posters. You need honor. Otherwise, people will collect your, your money and mock you and make a fool out of you. Anyone here who has suffered shame and reproach in the name of Jesus... I stand in partnership with the grace upon this altar. May this grace called honor, let it rest on you. 
Shout a loud amen. Let it rest on you. Now watch this. So I'm submitting myself, daddy, to prayer. And in the place of prayer, in the place of the study of the word, in the place of consecration, in the place of fasting, it may not look like it. I may come from any village around Wari, any village around Nigeria, it does not matter. The moment you begin to engage priesthood, the tokens that make you a king start arriving. Wisdom starts arriving. Power starts arriving. Favor starts arriving. Honor starts arriving. And with these tokens, you are decorated with royalty after the order of Joseph. And you are given a seat in the cosmos. And hear me, when you sit down there, you sit as a man of authority. How do you know you're a man of authority? The centurion taught us. For I am a man of authority, having soldiers under me. I say to one, go, and he goeth. I say to another, come, and he cometh. When you tell things go and they don't respect you, when you tell things come and they don't respect you, you are not a king. And the problem is not your crown and your scepter. The problem is that your priesthood has not powered your throne. Let's finish. You are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. Now you understand what that scripture is. Whereas you needed king, priest, prophet. Now that formation was not thrown away. It was just made more superior. Because I wish I had time. You would be learning according to scriptures like Philippians 1.19. It says, give it to us please. There are times that even though you are a believer, it will not be your own prayer that saves you. You will still need the prophetic to come in and bail you out. For I know that this shall turn for my salvation, not to my prayer, to your prayer. And the supply of the Spirit in Christ Jesus. I'm saying that so that when our Father comes here to speak, don't say I'm seeing him every day. You perhaps did not have this revelation as you saw him. Now that you have it, you know that every time you see priesthood, you see kingship, dominion is by the corner. Dominion, therefore, is not an impartation. It's a resultant effect of piecing together the forces of victory that put you in command. It says, and of the sons of Issachar, men who had an understanding of the times, and they knew what Israel ought to do. As a result, they were in command of their brethren. Is this a good place to pray? Please rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet, please. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. Adonai. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. Let me give us two prayer points. Is it all right if we pray these prayer points? Shout it as loud as you can, as though you mean business with seeing the glory of God manifest in your life. Say, Father. Father. One more time. Say, Father. Father. In the name of Jesus. I decree and declare fresh fire upon my prayer life, fresh fire upon my word study life, the grace for sacrifice. Go ahead and begin to pray. All that will make me an effective priest, I obtain grace. Come on, someone is praying. Word of life, are you praying? Warrior, are you praying? Fresh fire. Let it fall upon my fire, my, my, my fire, fire. Let the fire upon my prayer Let the life. Fire 
the grace to fast, the grace to give, the grace to serve, the grace to sacrifice, the grace to make sacrifices, the grace to know your word. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. The fire. Fall upon me, Lord. Release a fresh fire. Are you fire. clapping your hands release and praying? Release a fresh fire. Release a fresh fire. Oh, Lord. Release a fresh fire upon my prayer life. Turn my prayer life around. Turn my word life around. Turn my worship life around. Release a fire. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, you understand why the Bible says, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. That means wisdom carries glory. Let not the strong man glory in his strength. But let him that glory at glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. You are going to pray over these four things that I told you. Wisdom, power, favor, honor. Lord, they must rest upon my life so that I walk in the experience of dominion. Lay your hands on your head and begin to pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I declare, let wisdom be bestowed upon Go ahead. Lay Lord, your hands upon today. your head and declare wisdom. Wisdom being the principal thing. Let power from on high rest upon my life. Pray for favor. Let your favor rest upon me. Let honor rest upon my life. Tokens of the secret place. Tokens of priesthood. Requirements for kingship. For in Jesus' name we pray. I decree and declare, standing upon the grace of our Father upon this altar, in the name of Jesus, for someone who came here for this convention, you came here with your heart open, I stand and I speak over your life. Whatever has brought your prayer life down, whatever has destroyed your zeal for the things of God, may it be fanned to flames now. May it be fanned to flames now. May it be fanned to flames now. Number two, I pray for you and that from the depth of my heart. That in the name of Jesus, the discipline to pray, the discipline to study until you show yourself approved, the discipline to fast, the discipline of consecration, the discipline to give yourself wholly that your profiting appears unto all. May that grace rest upon you. And then I'm praying for you. Authentic wisdom that speaks. Let it rest on you. Power from on high that puts you in command of situations and circumstances. May it rest upon your destiny. Favor that opens strange doors mysterious doors commanding access commanding acceptance bringing unusual kindness to you receive it in the name of Jesus and finally the grace for honor honor is the ability to be perceived and to be rewarded to match your true value it's called honor if you are not perceived and rewarded to match your true value it is not honor I pray for you there are many of you who you are like Mordecai you've saved the life of the king but you've not been rewarded because honor is not upon you tonight I open the book of remembrance in the name of Jesus Christ praise God now my time is up but please let me plead that you lend me one minute. The foundation for priesthood is that you have an encounter with Jesus, the Son of the living God. Here's what the Bible has to say. That there is no other name under heaven that is given unto men by which we must be saved. Some trust in horses, others trust in chariots, but my Bible says 
we trust in the name of our Lord. There are many people who are around church, maybe even workers in church with all due respect. Being around the house of God does not translate to salvation. It opens you up to have the potential to be saved. But the only way to be saved, believing a man of God, may not give you salvation. In fact, does not give you salvation until you believe the message. There's someone here, perhaps you were invited, or you've been around this city, and on hearing me speak, the Spirit of God began to move upon your heart, telling you that it's time to win that war of destiny and to make a sincere decision for Jesus. There are others you will say, Apostle, I love Jesus, but it looks like in the last one year, my life has gone haywire. I cannot say that I've been consistent with my work with God. Wherever you are, I want to give you one minute. I want you to leave your seat boldly and come and stand before any of the aisles here, just close to the altar. Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.